So when you're working on the Cal Water H2O Challenge in an in-person classroom, there are some classroom management tips and organization tips that can make the process a lot easier. Um, I tend to always start, once we have our topic, with having us brainstorm whole class what steps we need to accomplish to reach our goal of finishing the project. And after that, I like to break my students into committees. So um, I do that in various ways. I always try and get my students to weigh in on how they would like to see the committees broken into. Um, sometimes I let them self-select groups. Sometimes I will um, randomly select students for groups and sometimes it's somewhere in the middle where my students have identified how many different committees they want and then I pull sticks for open spots, um, sticks with their names on them. So. I also sort of push the group selection to what I know will help my students be most successful. You always know your students best and you know what works for your classroom. Um, I always start with research committees uh, where every student has something they are researching for the project. And that way everyone has that sort of language arts academic piece where they are learning about the topic and then they take turns sharing out what they've learned. Once we have a good foundation for what they needed to know, then I break them into additional action committees. So every student is always on at least two committees. Sometimes they're on more, depending on where the needs are. So when, then when they go to the action committees, that might be building something, maybe it's creating posters, maybe it's making some kind of um, program at our school. Uh, those are the parts where they are building it. That way every student feels like they were part of the entire process. Sometimes my committees will have a lead person on them if that is needed for that group. Sometimes they all work equitably. It just depends on the year. Um, I have my students record everything onto a class website that they build. Sometimes all my students have access. Sometimes just that team lead has access. And that's how we build our information and our kind of basis of what we all know. And then I end with the portfolio where different leads from different groups get together and they start summarizing what they have learned onto the portfolio. So those are the little tips and tricks I have found after four years to help organize the project to make this really big kind of um, sometimes daunting project for the kids feel manageable and feel like something that they can accomplish in a set timeline. Although COVID-19 has forced us to teach virtually, it does not mean that it has robbed us of the opportunity to compete, compete in the H2O challenge. It just means that we have to do things a little bit differently. I see the possibilities. I see the ability to incorporate the H2O challenge in ways that we have never even envisioned before. Now we are forced to give students more control over what our challenges are. You know, first of all, begin with your brainstorming. You know, students are excellent problem solvers if we give them the opportunity. So begin by coming up with possible projects, you know, through your Zoom meeting and take note of what they can do. Then allow students time to research those possible um, projects and let them determine what can and cannot be done. From there, you know, as before, assign students different groups and they can go into breakout rooms and they can work as a group to come up with different projects or different methods to complete their project. You know, just because we're doing things virtually doesn't mean that we can't do education the way that we're used to. It just means that we have to tweak and we have to go through and do some different things. The way that I envision doing an H2O challenge is that instead of having a project that's based into one central location, have it branched out into different locations. You know, have kids look at their neighborhood, look at their um, the water quality all throughout their neighborhood, and then compare that data. That's one way or have students do little bitty mini lessons and have them, you know, come up with strategies how to distribute that information in the virtual world. Maybe they can do um, a, a water challenge in which they're informing their neighborhood about different strategies that they can use to conserve water. You know, the possibilities are unlimited. I think that what's going to limit everything is our mindset. We have to be able to think outside the box because right now we're in a whole new realm of education and I know that teachers across the nation and our students are going to be up for that challenge if 
we give them the opportunity. Here are some tips for incorporating the Cal Water H2O project for your distance learning classroom. One, pique student interests with a provocative video. Perhaps a video of California during the drought. Two, create a video explaining your directions and have a written directions and an example available so students know exactly what to do. Three, create thinking questions from the videos in your collaborative spaces. Apps like Google, Classroom, Padlet, and Seesaw really help with collaboration. Next, invite community members like from the Parks Department or someone from Cal Water to your Google Meet or your Zoom with your students. You might wanna have students have their questions prepared beforehand. And finally, to incorporate engineering, teach students about making blueprints. Students can plan and diagram using Google Draw or they can do it on a piece of paper and then take a picture and send it to you.